Hello, my dear friends. Let us continue our talk about hazard analysis critical control point, HACCP, which is a food safety management system related to infection control chapter of quality standards. In this last video of this series, we will talk about the implementation of HACCP. For more videos, please visit my Facebook page, Healthcare Quality, and my YouTube channel, Dr. Hassan Kamel. This is the 12th and last video of this series of HACCP. What is the principle behind HACCP? Safe ingredients plus safe process equals a safe product. What are the essential requirements before the implementation of HACCP? High standards of design and maintenance must already exist in the kitchen and ancillary areas. Staff must already be suitably trained and be receiving regular good in-house food hygiene training. Senior management must fully support the HACCP concept with equal support given to the food service manager in provision of time and resources. The four C's concept, cross-contamination, cleaning, shilling, and cooking. Developing a HACCP plan go through 12 steps. First step, assemble and train the HACCP team. The HACCP team must be proportional to the size, risk, and complexity of the business. The team leader should be clearly defined. Team responsibilities. The team will need to communicate effectively with the rest of the food handlers. Team members may obtain information from a number of sources, including websites, seminars, and laboratory food poisoning data. Define the terms of reference and scope of the HACCP study. The starting point is to decide which operations or processes and which hazards are to be included within the HACCP study. It's sometimes preferable to concentrate on one type of hazard, for example, microbiological. In catering, for example, this may involve all products which are stored under refrigeration or cooked and served immediately. It's also important to decide the starting point, for example, the purchase of foods from a cash and carry, and the finish point, for example, the consumption of the food by the customer. We have a practical example in this training, which is preparation of cooked turkey. The second step is to describe the products or processes. Products will need to be described in relation to their composition, the potential hazards and risks associated with them, their suitability for bacterial multiplication, methods of processing, cooking, storage, and distribution. 
because of the large numbers of varied products and the frequent menu changes, products prepared in a similar way or subject to the same process may be dealt with as a group. Examples of these groups are high-risk food which is served cold, high-risk food frozen or chilled which is reheated and served hot, preachable raw food which is cooked and served hot, preachable raw food which is cooked for hot holding and then served hot, preachable raw food which is cooked, cooled, and reheated for hot service. Preachable raw food, which is cooked, cooled, and served cold. Frozen food, which is thawed, cooked, and served hot or cold. And ambient temperature low-risk foods, which are cooked and served hot or cold. The third step is to identify intended use or customers. The likely customer should be considered. They will include vulnerable groups such as babies, the elderly, pregnant women, ill people, those who suffer allergic reactions, and those with immune deficiency, such as drug abusers. Institutional feeding will need to be considered. The fourth step is to construct a flow diagram. A flow diagram is a systematic representation of the sequence of steps or operations involved with a particular food item or process, usually from purchase of raw material to the consumer. This is a flow diagram for cooking a fresh turkey. Step 5 is to validate the flow diagram. It's important to ensure that the flow diagram accurately represents what happens in practice. In catering, in particular, different chiefs may produce a dish in a variety of ways, which may have a significant impact on HACCP and will be represented by modified flow diagrams. Step number six is to conduct a hazard analysis. The most common hazard is contamination with harmful microorganisms such as food poisoning bacteria or viruses. In addition to contamination, the multiplication of food poisoning bacteria and the survival of bacteria, for example, because of inadequate cooking or disinfecting are also hazards. Less frequently hazards involve the presence of a foreign body such as glass or nails, or the presence of toxic chemicals, such as pesticides or cleaning chemicals. Contamination with illegal additives, parasites, or allergens are also hazards, as is food which is dangerously hot, for example, a freshly, a freshly baked jam tart or boiling coffee.
we conclude that the types of hazards that can exist in a catering facility could be physical, biological, or chemical. Hazard analysis involves identifying the hazards that may affect the process, identify the steps at which the hazards are likely to occur, deciding which hazards are significant, for example, their elimination or reduction to acceptable levels is essential to the production of safe food, and determining the measure necessary to control the hazard. This is an example of a hazard analysis form. The left column represents different steps in processing of food. And on the top row, we have different stages of control of that hazard. This is another example for the stage of what could go wrong. In this chart, we give different examples of some hazards and their controls. A HACCP control chart should be completed for each food, group of foods, or process. The first two columns of the HACCP control chart can be completed at the hazard analysis stage. This chart has been completed for our example of cooking a fresh turkey, which will be sliced and eaten hot, or cooled and eaten cold, or reheated and eaten hot. Only microbiological hazards are being considered. Control measures are those actions taken to prevent, eliminate, or reduce hazards to an acceptable level. In the case of microorganisms, controls to prevent the multiplication can be applied to temperature, time, pH, water activity, the size, shape, or weight, for example, of a joint of meat, and the quantity and the type of additives used, especially preservatives. In this chart, we add controls to the hazards for each step in food processing. The seventh step in HACCP plan is to determine the critical control points. Critical control points in the process are those steps where control measures must be used to prevent, eliminate, or reduce a hazard to an acceptable level. Here, we try to determine the critical control points in our example.
So a critical control point is an identifiable point in a process whereby a control or safety measure must be applied to remove a hazard from a food or a step which is required to make the food safe. Example, cooking a burger from raw. If the burger is undercooked, any harmful bacteria present in the meat will not be destroyed and surviving bacteria could give your customer food poisoning. In this example, cooking is a critical control point in the food preparation process. Another example is cooling rice. If recently cooked rice is cooled too slowly, it could give you customer food poisoning. In this example, cooling in a food process is a critical control point. Please think about these examples. Preparing raw vegetables for cooking. A person is preparing raw vegetables by peeling and washing them. Is this a critical control point? Again, preparing raw vegetables for a salad. A, po a person is preparing raw vegetables for inclusion into a salad bar. Is this a critical control point? In our example of cooking turkey, it was noted that the multiplication of food poisoning bacteria could occur if the turkey was not stored in a refrigerator. However, in the case of raw, of raw turkey, the control of pathogens such as salmonella by refrigerated storage is not critical to food safety. In the first case, the spoilage organisms will probably outgrow the food poisoning bacteria, so the turkey will spoil before they can reach a dangerous level. More importantly, the turkey will be cooked, and if it is cooked thoroughly, the food poisoning bacteria will be destroyed. However, the storage of raw, of raw turkey in a refrigerator is desirable and a requirement of good hygiene practice. In the case of cooked turkey, the multiplication of food poisoning bacteria is very serious and because it will not be subject to any treatment which would kill the bacteria before consumption, it's essential that the multiplication of food poisoning bacteria be controlled. In this case, the storage of cooked, of cooked turkey in a refrigerator is critical to food safety, that's to say, a critical control point. This chart shows the series of questions that may be asked at each step in the process to determine whether the step is a control point or a critical control point. And here we have another example of the series of questions that will help us determine whether this step is a critical control point or not. Step 8. Establish critical limits for each critical control point. Critical limits are values which are set for control measures to ensure the food is safe. 
For example, cooking to a central temperature of 75 degrees centigrade. Hot holding of food above 63 degrees centigrade. Or refrigerating food below 8 degrees centigrade. If a critical limit is breached, for example, if refrigerated food is above 8 degrees centigrade for more than 4 hours, the food should be thrown away. Quantifiable critical limits are preferred and the results obtained on site, preferably instantaneously. For example, temperature, time, pH, and physical parameters such as weight and size of food. Bacteriological sampling may take several days to obtain the number of specific bacteria that are present, and therefore, this cannot be used as a critical limit. Critical limits in relation to the multiplication of food poisoning bacteria are stated as a combination of time and temperature. For example, cooked poultry must not be displayed above 8 degrees centigrade for more than 4 hours. In case of survival of bacteria, cooking temperature of at least 75 degrees centigrade must be achieved, usually in the deep thigh muscle. In this example, if the turkey in the refrigerator is above 8 degrees centigrade for more than 4 hours, the critical limit has been exceeded. Target levels and tolerance. If a critical limit is breached, a significant amount of food may need to be destroyed. It's preferable to set target limits which may enable a potential breach of a critical limit to be detected and remedied before the food becomes unfit. The difference between a critical limit and a target level is known as a tolerance. For example, a critical limit for refrigerated storage of high-risk food could be 8 centigrade for 4 hours. If this critical limit was exceeded, all the food in the refrigerator may have to be destroyed. It is therefore sensible to set a target figure of 5 degrees centigrade only. If the target limit is breached, for example, if the food is at 6 degrees centigrade, this would allow action to be taken before the 8 degrees centigrade was breached and avoid the need to throw the food away. Adjustment of the thermostat may be the only action necessary to bring the process back under control. In setting any critical limit, it must be based on a common sense and recognized as a control which will prevent, eliminate, or reduce a hazard to an acceptable level. A critical limit may be based upon factors such as time, temperature, physical parameters, or available chlorine. Step number nine, monitoring of control measures at each critical control point. Monitoring is checking the operation to make sure things are working correctly. Monitoring can be very simple by using your human senses or you can use technical equipment. 
whatever method you use to have a successful HACCP program, you must physically record the results of your monitoring. Monitoring must be accurate, representative, unbiased, competently done, timely, and supervised. It can be automatic or manual, and continuous or at set frequencies. Arguably, continuous automatic monitoring, for example, the use of temperature data loggers fitted with alarms, may be more cost effective, and the records provided are likely to be more accurate than manual monitoring with a probe thermometer that's hand recorded. Busy periods of work or forgetfulness often result in the bad practice of records being completed at the end of the day or even the end of the week. Monitoring systems should state what the critical limits and target levels are, how the monitoring should be undertaken, where the monitoring should be undertaken, when the monitoring should be undertaken, and who is responsible for monitoring. The frequency of monitoring must be cost effective and sufficient to ensure that the hazard is controlled. This is an example of a HACCP control chart. Step number 10 in our HACCP plan is to establish corrective actions. So, you have identified a problem or potential failure in one of your food processes. What are you going to do to correct it? First response, protect the consumer and deal with the food. Second response, deal with the cause. Investigate and identify the cause of the problem and correct it. Here is an example of corrective actions. In any corrective action scenario, you need to ask yourself the following questions. What is the problem? Where and how can it be dealt with? When will it be dealt with? Who can deal with it? In this example of a chicken probe on removal from oven is 69 degrees centigrade cool temperature, which is below the required temperature of 75 degrees centigrade. The chicken is undercooked, so we can return it to the oven until core temperature is more than 75 degrees centigrade. And this could be done by Master Chief who first protects the consumer by not allowing the undercooked poultry to be served to patients. Second action is to correct the cause of non-compliance, for example, returns chicken to the, to the oven for longer time. Here is another example of a corrective action to another problem of delivery of dairy food from local suppliers in an unrefrigerated vehicle.
your corrective actions must be written into your HACCP plan. It's essential that staff are trained accordingly on all these corrective actions and you know what to do. Step number 11, establish verification procedures. This is the process you adopt to check that the safety measures that you have implemented are working correctly. This will usually involve auditing against the HACCP plan to ensure the correct implementation and ensuring that the flow diagram remains valid. Hazards are being controlled. Monitoring is satisfactory. And where necessary, appropriate corrective actions has been or will be taken. Random bacteriological sampling and the product testing and analyzing complaints for types and trends are also verification techniques. Step number 12, check it and review it. Consider reviewing the HACCP plan when Operations change, for example, new equipment. Consumer group change, for example, new patients, diabetics. Or indications of HACCP plan failure, for example, insect found in food, or complaints of food being cold. This is an example of a hospital verification schedule. Step number 13, establish documentation and record keeping. Documentation includes the HACCP team and responsibilities, a floor plan, approved supplier list, hazard analysis including product or process description, critical control point determination and the flow diagram, critical limit determination, HACCP control charts, verification details, monitoring records, and prerequisite programs. Records include critical control point monitoring activities, deviations and corrective actions, modifications to the HACCP system, audit reports, customer complaints, calibration of instruments, and prerequisite program monitoring activities. All monitoring records should be signed and dated by the food handler undertaking the monitoring and countersigned by the supervisor. The following are actual examples of monitoring forms currently in use. And here is an example of a staff training record. And here 
is an example of thermometer calibration record. Thank you.